Hey, how much time do you spend worrying? Do you even want to admit how much time you spend worrying and being anxious and thinking about what's the worst could happen and it probably will happen and oh my goodness and yeah. Do you do you consider how much time you spend thinking about this kind of thing? Guess what? If you do, you are highly imaginative and that can be a really good thing. So let's look at the word imagination, but let's start with the part of the word that says image, because Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says, says, boy, I'm, my English is really good tonight, today, whatever. Um, we're creating God's image. So image, we are created in his image, which means the things that he can do, he has given us the ability to do because he created us in his image. And one of the things God does is imagine. So the word foreknowledge in scripture can also mean imagine. So this is saying that God imagined the entire universe and every person in it and all this creative, amazing goodness, and then he made it happen. That's to say he thought about it, he imagined it, and there it was. Pretty cool. If you think about something, if you can imagine something, you can make it happen. And yes, there are limitations to that, obviously. But I think you get my drift. So when scripture says we are created in God's image, it means we are created in his image. And he has the ability and he imagines things. And he has given us the gift of imagination also. Everything that has ever been created on earth by human beings started in someone's imagination. And that imagination is a gift from God. And the cool thing is, you're most like your creator, God, when you're creating. Imagine that. So he's given us the imagination and the ability to create from the imagination that he's given us because we have been created in his image. And I know this is it sounds kind of redundant and it's going to for a minute, but we're going to get we're going to get a little further into this, okay? Now going back to the word imagination, we just looked at the portion of the word that says image. Now let's look at the other portion of the word which is nation. A nation is a group of people that are connected by living in the same land mass, connected by being the same cultural or the same heritage. So it is a nation. So this is kind of a funny thing. Think about image and nation, imagination. God has created a nation of images, a nation of imaginers, imagineers. I think Disney calls their creative staff the imagineers. So God was the original one to create. God actually created the imagineers because they're all people. Everyone has the ability to imagine and create. So we have this imagination, which is an image nation or a group of Imagineers. Yes, I'm repeating myself again, but this gets a little tricky. Let's 
Let's look another, at another word that goes with imagination, and that is inspiration. This is a cool word because inspiration literally means God breathed. It's like God breathes all of this imagination and creativity onto, in us, through us, with us, and he's always doing it to the future. We don't ever imagine the past. We might think about the past, but because the past has already happened, we're not imagining what happened. We already know what happened, whether it's our perspective of it is correct or not. We already have our idea of what happened, so we don't have to imagine that. We imagine the future, and we imagine the future through God's inspiration. And his inspiration becomes very, very clear when you're in this personal chatting with him, talking to him, what are we doing? How are we doing it? What's next? What's coming? This future looking because God says, hey, I'm doing something new. Can you not see it? Can we just get on the same page here? Look, we're doing, I'm, I'm doing something new. Let's go. Well, that same idea is the inspiration that God has breathed and is breathing. And it's very, very easy to have an idea and go, oh, wow, this is a great idea. And then give it some time, six, eight, 10 hours, sleep on it. And then you're going, nah, that maybe wasn't such a great idea. Okay, well, sometimes they're not great ideas, but sometimes ideas that are really good can morph into really great, but we discount them. And we decide to make judgment on them based on what we think is good and what we think might work. And God is sitting there going, hello, you know, I just gave you this idea. I need you to stick with me on it, okay? The reality is God has given us the gift of imagination and inspiration and creativity. And we can take this idea and this gift of imagination and we can use it to scare the dickens out of ourselves and stay paralyzed in fear and not moving because what if this happens and what if that happens and oh my goodness and we can worry ourselves to death and live in fear of the future, and regret of the past, and stuck in the here and now, and right in the middle. And that's how we take a gift that he's given us, and we don't use it for his glory. We don't use it for the future and the joy that's coming and that we can have. We use it to stress ourselves out. And oh gosh, when we go into that, oh, let me stress myself out because this might happen or that might happen. Well, that stress, that's cortisol released in your body. And when that cortisol floods in, it does all kinds of bad things to your physical body. Isn't it amazing that the things you think are the things that harm your body? Let's not even talk about what you eat or drink or any of those things. It's It could be just your thoughts. Your thoughts can do as much harm to your body as eating candy every single day for the rest of your life literally. And yet, God says in Philippians 4, let me see, 4, 8. This is what I want you to think about. In Philippians 4, 8, God says, this is what I want you to think about. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. None of that, there, not one time in there does it say to worry. In fact, it says all through scripture, do not worry, do not be afraid. It says, 
good stuff, what's true, what's right, what's pure, what's lovely. Think about this stuff. Don't think about the scary stuff. Don't worry about your future. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Don't worry about how how this is going to work out the next time you turn around. None of this stuff is what God says. He says, think about the good stuff. Think about your relationship with me and my relationship with you. This is why I gave you an imagination. Let's imagine together. Let's create the future together. Not all this fear and stress stuff. Okay, this is the thing that blows my mind every time I think about it, and I try and think about it a lot. There is nothing negative in God. Now, yes, he he can be angry. Yes, he can be sad. Yes, he can grieve. But what I'm saying is there are no negative thoughts. There's nothing in his being telling him, well, you did that wrong. Well, that was dumb. Well, that was a bad idea. None of that stuff. He is joy and love. That is who he is. Joy and love and compassion. And all of these wonderful things that are in Philippians 4, 8, that's what he is. And that's what he thinks about. And he asks us to be like him. We're created in his image. And he asks us, be holy as I am holy. Well, part of that being holy is kicking the negative garbage to the curb and focusing on him, focusing on what he gives us, focusing on his joy, focusing on the future that he gives us because he gives us a future and a hope. So it blows my mind to try and comprehend there's nothing negative in God. Nothing. How, how is that even, I mean, I want to say, how is that even possible? And I can't even say that because it is possible because he is God. And yet I want that. I, I want that whole, I want the joy. I want the peace. I want the no negative thoughts. So if that means I need to get really, really close to God, then I want to get really, really close to God. I want to be right there hearing everything he says. And I want to be looking at everything he's looking at and paying attention to the things he's paying attention to and looking at them from his perspective because the future is bright. The future is here. It's coming and it's good. It's not bad. It's not scary. It's not intimidating. It's not the end of the world. It's God. The future is always God and he's always preparing us right now for this amazing future that he has to give us.